Welcome to Live with Terry Peranich here on Fuse Logic TV. I'm Michael Crichton, talking to real estate agents. And actually, as I'm beginning to learn through the various episodes that we have been doing, this is a program that I don't care what business you're in. There are things you're going to learn. And I think one of the things I like at the, at the top of the list is proof of the pudding. Terry, as a real estate expert, practices what he preaches every day. We're going to talk about starting your real estate success plan as a real estate agent. Now, this may seem like a really dumb question. Do you really need a plan? Well, Mike, uh, if you don't have a plan, you are planning to fail. So that's very true. simple. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, the real estate business is a very competitive business. And today, you know, in today's show, we're going to talk about um, selling residential real estate. So we're going to be talking to the real estate agents out there worldwide. Um, if you're a brand new agent or if you're a seasoned veteran, we're going to talk to you about what do you need to do when you first start your business. Now, let's be honest. You, you, go, to the, you go to the real estate school or the real estate university and you know, you spend five or six thousand dollars to get your real estate license, and then ninety percent of you are out of the business in twelve months. Isn't that a staggering statistic? That is staggering. And you know, when I uh, got licensed, um, I still remember, and I kind of got in trouble with the instructor because I challenged him on it. You know, he stood up and he was your typical real estate instructor. He's in, he's teaching because he can't sell, of course. So anyway, <laughs> like most of them. Uh, so so what ends up? Don't ha- mince your words. Yeah, 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 yeah. I won't. But so I, you know me, I call it the way I see it. Absolutely. So you know, he says ninety percent of you are going to be out of the business in the first twelve months. And you know, I looked around the room and there was about thirty one of us and. Uh, you know, I, I found that insulting because there were a lot of people that came into the real estate business uh, that had gotten laid off at that time. Right. Uh, you know, some people right out of university, uh, you know, young people like myself who were eager and, and wide-eyed and, and, and wanting to go out there and light the real estate world on fire. And then some people that were very passive. They may have been a housewife, um, uh, you know, a mom who was now getting back into the workforce, a divorced person, whatever. Um, but I took offense to that and I challenged the instructor and and, uh, you know, he didn't really kind of know what to say. And, and he kind of, you know, blew me off a little bit. And afterwards, I said, you know, I found that to be very offensive. Why would you uh, make, you know, these people have invested a lot of money and a lot of time in this course. And, I mean, at that time, it was only like 1200 bucks to take the course, you know, 20-some wow. years yeah. ago. Yeah. Now it's like five or 6000 yeah. And I said, you know, why would you, uh, you know, basically frame these people to fail? Right. Why would you pre-frame them to fail? Right. And he's like, Terry, I'm just stating a fact. Well, the fact of the matter is, of my graduating class, there's only two of us left. Myself and a fellow who's not even licensed, but he's a real estate uh, builder developer in Calgary and quite successfully. So um, he was actually right. Now, why does that happen? Why would 90% of the people that take their real estate course fail? Well, first off, when you take your real estate course, what are they teaching you? Theory. How to write the contracts, how to do the listings, all those important things. How to represent clients Mm -hmm. uh, professionally, ethically, with the highest level of uh, credibility and integrity. Um, All of the necessary items, but it's all theory. Well, what about strategy? Do they? Well, there's no strategy, Mike. They, They don't teach you any strategy. So when you go to real estate school, you learn a bunch of manuals and a bunch of modules, which which is very important. You learn the theories of real estate, how to evaluate a home. Right. Okay. Right. How to measure a home. Okay. Right. Uh, you learn real estate contract law. You learn all of those things, but you don't learn number one how to set yourself apart from the competition. Then you go and interview real estate brokerages, and and uh, you know you you go and interview your your different offices. Some of the the brand names you know in Canada, the Remaxes, the Royal LePages, the right. uh, Caldwell Bankers, the uh, um, Century Twenty One, etc. So you go you know interview uh, these companies and then you usually will find an office that you feel comfortable with and you find a broker owner or a manager and you know you like the office maybe the location is close to where you plan on trading in real estate or it's it's an area of familiarity and then usually guess what you're on your own they'll bring you in there's a little bit of training and and i'm not saying all offices are like this but for the most part once you get in the business you're usually on your own and I, i remember when i first started um, I had taken a course in California. I, I didn't have any money, but I flew out there and I had listened to a cassette tape on a guy that just 
uh, uh, was, was amazing with information and I had to go meet him and he was putting on a, a two day mastermind event. And so I went out there and, uh, he had a, a program on how to call what are called expired listings, homes that were for sale with real estate agents that didn't sell. So, um, that I went out and, well, yeah. and I came back here and I mean, Hey, these people have put up their hand already and said, Hey, we're, you know, we were on the market, but our agent didn't sell, and now they come off the market. And at that time, you could get a computer printout of all the homes that were for sale and, and didn't sell. So I went and took this course and came back here, and I was all excited. And I still remember um, I was in the office at 7 o'clock in the morning, and I thought, well, what a great time to get people at home. You don't <laughs> want to get them at 5 o'clock. They're eating supper. They're spending time with their family. But at 7 o'clock, they've had their coffee or whatever. And, and a lot of people would hang up the phone like, are you crazy? But a lot of them would go, Wow. This guy is calling us at 7 o'clock in the morning, and a lot of these people are up. They've had their breakfast and coffee, and they'd say, yeah, come on over and list our house. But I still remember a classic story. I was walking around my real estate office my first two or three weeks of the business looking for people to help me. Nobody wanted to help me. You know what, kid? Go do what I did. Go knock on doors and go cold call. And we talked about some of that stuff in a, in a prior episode. Yeah. And you know what? I still remember a fellow. He's an Irish fellow. And he said to me, uh, hey, rookie. Go make the coffee. It was 7 o'clock in the morning. And I said, you know what? You go make the coffee. I'm calling expireds. And and from that minute on, <laughs> I started to set myself apart from the competition. So that's one of the things that I did is I became an expert at expired listings. But more than anything, the, the first piece of advice that I want to share with real estate agents who have maybe just gotten licensed or uh, are really needing to find their way or find a plan. Yeah. Number one, identify the area that you're going to work. And once you identify the area you're going to work, become the absolute expert in that area. In other words, own it. Become the brand of choice. And one of the ways I did that Many, many years ago, again, when I started, um, I read all the guerrilla marketing books with Jay Conrad Levinson, and I studied Jay Abrams and, mm -hmm. and Dan Kennedy, some of the great uh, direct and rapid response coaches. And, uh, um, you know, what everybody should know out there is that I, um, I became a real student of marketing. Right. Not so much real estate, but marketing. How could I get the phone to ring? How could I become the absolute area expert? So I started sending out 50,000 flyers a month. I mean, I really didn't have any money. I got myself, uh, uh, you know, one of the things I did is I went out and got a $10,000 line of credit, mm -hmm. and which, uh, you know, I thank my dad every day. He was willing to co-sign, but I, I uh, convinced uh, uh, this fella at the bank uh, in his brown stodgy shoot suit, and I always tell this story at my boot camps, and he believed in me, and there I had $10,000. So I went out and started printing up some flyers, and, uh, you know, my first month in real estate, I made $18,000, and the ink hadn't even dried on my real estate exam. And was this something like when you were going through your studies as a real estate agent, we talk about the plan. Were you almost starting to formulate a bit of a plan as you were studying or? Yeah, that's, you know, Mike, that's, <laughs> you know me so well. Uh, you know, when I was in the real estate, as a matter of fact, it took me uh, three times to pass my real estate exam. The passing mark was 70%. And the first couple times, I think I got in the 60s, and I think I'm a little dyslexic, but it, it's more of, I think, an attention deficit disorder because I really wasn't that interested in the theory. I right. was interested in how can I go out and help all these sellers and buyers? How, how can work? I go right. out there and have fun with real estate? And um, so what happened to me, Mike, was the first couple times I failed, and then I think the third time I got 70 exactly. <laughs> I think it may have been 69, but the, now the women felt sorry for me yeah. because I was very charming to them, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, today, uh, you know, I started sending out 50,000 flyers. Today I send out 238,000 pieces. And, well, matter of you know, fact, here, let's, yeah, let's well, here's, let's, here's let's an example one, of yeah. uh, this is what I Just call my VIP card. Right and... Uh, you know this little, you know this little flyer is called a rapid response mailing piece, and uh, that's right here. You know I send out two hundred and thirty-eight thousand of those, and, and literally within three to four days, we will have between sixty and eighty home evaluation calls. So you know if if for some of the seasoned real estate agents that are watching the show, uh, they'll know that that's unheard. And of course, I have a team of nearly thirty people now. But, um, you know, I used to go on 11, 12, 15 appointments a day when I used to work all by myself. But yeah. when you, you see, when I first started, Mike, and we're going to talk in, in future episodes specifically about direct mail systems. So the whole show will be about direct mail. Right. We wanted to show them a quick example. But what happened, 
I started sending these flyers to an area that when I was younger, you know, I was, you know, a decent athlete. I was a pretty good hockey player, pretty good soccer player, football player, mm-hmm. involved in the community. Uh, I sent flyers to where people sort of knew me. So my friends, my family would get them. And, uh, you know, of course, I did the basic things. I sent out all the welcome and introductory letters and sent out my business cards. But you know what? That's the traditional way of doing things. I did that. Did it really make a difference? Well, most people said, well, he's too new. Maybe we don't want to deal with him because he's too new. But I was having people calling me saying, come sell our house. We got your flyer. Then I would sell their house. Then they would need to buy a house. So here was this young kid, brand new in the business. I sold 66 homes my first year. I was rookie of the year. And the first system that I implemented was the expired listing program and then, of course, my flyer program. Actually, they were simultaneous where I implemented them at the same time. But two systems... And my first year in business, I made almost two hundred thousand dollars. Now you know, there's going to be some some first people. Out, there's some people out there that are going to be saying, "Yeah, Terry, that's a that's a wonderful story," and it is. Of course, it is a wonderful story. Let's talk about vulnerabilities because there's there's a question I think that that, that we need to address, which is things might not work. There's going to be people that are out there that are, are established real estate agents who know this experience. I've tried some things; they don't work. It's called and testing, lot, and a lot of people will give up. Right. What about yourself? What did you do well, when you ran my, into the wall? My, uh, you know, you know, um, and I did run into the wall because you know there, uh, we'll speak in future episodes on the flyers, but I mean I would test all kinds of different flyers, all kinds of different colors, spending money needlessly, but the thing and maybe not so the, needlessly the, 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 the one yeah somewhere. the one key thing that I did not do was quit, and most people quit too soon. They will start to test. And Mike, you you were a a world renowned uh, uh, leader in marketing and advertising. I mean, you're a legendary guy. And and uh, for the all of our people that are watching the show, believe me, Mike is an amazing guy. He's he's uh, you behind the scenes, amazing guy. Um, the bottom line is that I would test things, and all mm-hmm. of a sudden, you know, it's like if you throw enough against the wall, something's going to stick. Absolutely. But, yeah. you know, in life, most people quit too soon. They, yeah. they get on a diet or a fitness program, and they start to lose weight, and then they quit too soon because, you know what? Their belief system, something interrupts their pattern. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Tony Robbins always says, you know, uh, things will interrupt your pattern. Well, you know what? On a positive way, you need things to sometimes interrupt your pattern, but there are things that can interrupt your pattern in a negative way. And the biggest thing is, Mike, for me is I didn't quit. I had an unshakable belief system that I was going to succeed. The next thing I did is I became an absolute expert on what was called direct and rapid response marketing and understanding headlines, compelling reasons, and call to actions. And we're going to talk about that in future shows, how to create a flyer that will make your phone ring off the hook. Well, something you've been talking about is is really differentiating yourself. And if I'm picking up right on what you're saying is, because we can talk about how extensive a plan should be. Now, in many ways, when I see the kind of marketing that you've done out there and you, you, your face, your presence is everywhere. I mean, you can visit on Facebook, Terry Peranich team, for example, online. There are websites to visit. There's bus benches you would see in this market. For example, you've done speaking internationally and you've built yourself up. But it seems, and and maybe this will take us uh, to the end of our show, is is that you've been very single-minded and in a way been simple in your approach. It wasn't like you took on a million things. Rather, what you did was focused on one thing and worked on that. Mike, I I would focus on one system Mm -hmm. and I would test that system until... It worked. I mean, what was it, Edison, 10,000 times yeah. with the light bulb, yeah. Thomas Edison? Yeah. Uh, um, so the bottom line is it just had to work once. Right. But you see, I didn't quit. So um, the flyers actually, whether it was uh, beginner's luck, uh, but I read a lot. I read I read marketing books. I read books on advertising, the differences between marketing and branding. And I became an expert at marketing very young. And then I started to test. And if something didn't work, You know what? So it didn't work. I would try again. But then when something worked, I remember one flyer, we had over 63 evaluation calls in a 24-hour period. Wow. There are real estate agents that don't have 63 evaluation calls in a career. Absolutely. If you want to actually have Terry Peranich live in your home, you can do that. 
because there is a really power-packed two-DVD set for just $199 plus GST. It's Terry Peranich Live, and we encourage you uh, to uh, contact the uh, uh, the email address that's on your screen, and you can place your order. That's Terry Peranich Live, and that's 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 sort of uh, that's our two-day boiled down. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, it's boiled All down of our from systems, many yeah. hours down to uh, a two-DVD set. You've been watching Live with Terry Peranich here on FuseLogic TV with real estate expert Terry Peranich. I'm Michael Crichton.